Anyway, this is uh, this is the title item. Uh, Kevin Sorbo doesn't want anyone to say that his anti-trans children's book is anti-trans. Why? It's Kevin Sorbo. Why does he? Why should he care what people say well, about that? They're going to say it no matter what. That's the thing, and we'll get into this with the article. But um, the whole reason he published the book is for it to be anti-trans, for people to condemn it for being anti-trans, for him to then be like, oh, it's not anti-trans, I'm just teaching boys to be strong boys. This is cancel culture. And then it makes a big shitstorm, and people who wouldn't have otherwise have bought the book will now go out and buy it. It's a whole business he's, model. He's like, using the outrage market. Yeah, no, it's it's a whole business model. Like the, the company that published it for him, uh, Brave Books, that's their whole mm -hmm. business model. Kevin Sorbo is not the first person they've done this with, where they, they'll write some mediocre book that's not actually all that interesting. They'll make a controversy about it. They'll, like, they'll manufacture the controversy about it. And then a bunch of uh, right-wing nut jobs hear that this book is being canceled. And they're like, okay, well, that book's being canceled, so I got to go support it. And they buy the book. And then Ben Shapiro and Michael Knowles and all of them will go, you need to be reading this book right now. It's amazing. And the mm -hmm. left doesn't want you to read it. And then the quartering will go on and definitely, definitely not be sponsored by a Nazi organization called Antelope Hill. I mean, what? <laughs> I felt a little dirty when I saw at one point I had a, I had a sponsor that also sponsored the quartering. I'm just like, yeah, uh, I think I don't love I that. I think the, I think the 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 craziest thing for me was the the Antelope Hill revelation. Like, oh, this is a a Nazi publishing company that only makes and publishes Nazi books, both old and new. And he's just like, yeah, you should definitely follow these people. Like, all right, cool. Anybody who says quartering's not a Nazi is just a liar. Now, we know. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Well, I think the sponsor that sponsored me and him was Established Titles, so that was one that I dropped anyway. Yeah, every everybody had to drop Established Titles because they uh they're hot water. It boiled. See, I didn't know that I, I had heard of Established Titles well before that whole thing went down, and I'd seen them on other channels that I considered to be reputable, so I was kinda of like mm -hmm. I was kind of lax in my research on that one because I'm like, well, I've seen them on like Cinema Therapy did an ad for that, and it was like you know, they, those are they're good guys. They'd probably do the research. They'd vet it. So, like, I kind of relied on other people's vetting, um, mm -hmm. and then it turned out not to work well. And what what ended up happening is I cut my ad out of that video. Like, mm -hmm. I, I, there was such a backlash. It was like, okay, nope, I'm I'm gonna cut the ad out. Nope, that's fine. There's been enough backlash. Um, I don't think, like, I still to this day, I don't think it technically qualifies as a scam necessarily, but it's shady as fuck. I think and it, so it, like I don't care that it's not a scam it's shady as fuck I don't want to be associated so I I, yeah. I cut the ad right out of the video and oh my god they they offered me I think it was like $800 a month just to rerun the exact same ad that I had already filmed once a month I forget Jesus. the exact number but it's like like that's, that's a lot of money a huge, and, that's such a huge revenue hit to take yeah so I'm like oh I I wish they weren't so shady because you I could, wish they weren't like, that would have been garba would have been such easy money so fucking easy money um but no they were too shady so i'm like okay nope you guys are right i did the research i'm dropping them i cut the ad out of the video i still got paid for that video actually <clears throat> they never they never went back and checked and i like i like left the money in an account that's like i'm gonna basically just hold just this in, in escrow case. just in case because like if they come back and they're like hey you didn't fulfill your end of the contract be like Sure, here's your money back. But like, eh. Yeah. Anyway, Kevin Sorbo wrote a book. We're still trying to get to that. <laughs> so, washed oh, up, boy. washed up actor Kevin Sorbo recently released a new uh, released a new children's book called "The Test of Lionhood" that he hopes will teach little boys how to become strong men and strong providers for families as they grow up. So, here's the cover by Kevin Sorbo and Brave Books. That that and there is very is key. Um mm -hmm. he he probably didn't write this book. He he's probably just attached his name to it. Um had a, had no, a ghostwriter take no, care of it. No, no. I mean, yes, but 
It's not that he attached his name to it. It's not that he had a ghostwriter do it. It's that they approached him. Because oh. we'll, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. Um, so yeah, all, all of the uh, all of the interviews he's been doing with this, he's been talking about trans issues. Like Sorbo says, it's dangerous to teach children that men can be, and women can swap sexes at will or that children can be whichever gender they choose. And, you know, the, the same old trans panic shit. Yeah. Um, oh. Hey, how, where'd all my highlights go? I highlighted a bunch of this shit. They're gone. They must have updated the website because uh, if, if if the website updates, the highlight thing breaks. Um, oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah, but I, I guess mean, it makes sense. It, it's very hard for it to hold. Yeah. Because um, let's see here. What this this is what this is a generic thing that always happens. Like this is not specific to the book thing, but I always find this amusing. These these are also people that are like very much gung ho. Support the military. Support the troops. Support like Blue Lives Matter military matters stuff like that um but then they say yeah. we give pride an entire month in this country and yet we give our veterans only one day this is really weird to me um pride sir, month isn't a holiday well yeah but like do, y you do know that military appreciation month is may right mm -hmm. so like or is it veterans appreciation month i forget but like there there is a whole month for veterans like we and have it's may and they like, never know these... this. They never know this. They're always just like, oh, no, it's Pride Month, but we only get one day for veterans. It's like, okay, never mind that there's Memorial Day. There's um, it, it's like three or four days. I don't know all your American holidays. Well, this, so there's Military Appreciation Month. Uh-huh. But the, the There's the Memorial confu... Day. There's Veterans Day. There's... Yeah. The, the part that confuses me, so Veterans Day and Memorial Day, those are those are holidays. So, like, in school, those are days that you would take off of school, usually. Um, and depending on which government position you have or which position you have for work, you might take that day off as well. Like, a lot of banks will take those days off, for instance. The Even if they don't understand that Military Appreciation Month is a thing, even if they don't get that, I'm more upset at less ex less upset at their ignorance and more upset at the blatant category error we don't take a month off for pride month nobody fucking does it's not a holiday we don't compare apples and oranges i i don't give a shit that they're both fruit yeah scott de hunt is saying remembrance day november 11th yeah in uh in commonwealth countries it's remembrance day in america it's memorial day i think is that one mm-hmm yeah, yeah, we've got we have Memorial we, Day. We that's that's the day that we wear our poppies because of the poem that was written by the soldier Tommy Tuberville. <laughs> Sorry. You know what's even funnier? It's even funnier. Memorial Day is in May during the Appreciation Month for our veterans. Like the holiday is nested within the month they ignored. Yeah. So. He gave a bunch of interviews, there are a bunch of articles about this, and none of the articles spend much time discussing the actual storyline of the book because obviously no one gives a shit. There's no story worth talking about. And hell, Sorbo didn't even write the damn thing himself. The book's cover literally says it was written by Sorbo and Brave Books. And this is the same publisher that did Pub similar things with Kirk Cameron, Dan Crenshaw, and Jack Posobiec. Is that how you say that? I have no idea, but just as a rule of thumb, publishing companies are not writers. If a publishing company is noted as right as as being like a co-author on your book, that's extremely sus to me. They're not supposed to do that. Yeah, it's well, he says <laughs> it's a technique where hired and unnamed staff writers write the book, uh, but conservative celebrities whose actual input in the books is minimal get to slap their names on it and treat it as their own. Mm -hmm. And then. When he was interviewing with Fox News, he said, I'm actually quite thrilled that I was asked to be a part of this. You're if you write a book, you don't go in interviews and say, I was asked to be a part of writing the book that I wrote. No, the only time you do that is when you have a book that is being collaboratively written between authors. So, like, if you've got a crossover between two franchises or you've got two authors with similar or even clashing styles that are going to be co-writing a book together for different perspectives like, of characters. Like when, that's not what like this when is. Pratchett and Gaiman teamed up and wrote Good Omens. 
stuff like that yeah like that's when you that's when somebody approaches you because they're like hey let's do let's do a thing together but when it's a publishing company the only thing a publishing company should be doing is existing and being contacted by you or your agent to publish material you've already made not co-authoring your book yeah yep um yeah and then in the articles about it like there's a super duper long article um on fox news digital which starts out with saying beyond the pages of the book sorba said he's quite worried about what's going on in the culture and then the rest of the article was about culture war nonsense so it's like the first paragraph is about the book and the rest is trans people are taking over sports or whatever of course have you so have you seen uh it's 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 mostly been on twitter that i've seen this but have you seen all of the different sporting agencies that have been trying to get trans people out of them lately that aren't actually like fishing you know physical sports yeah like like sports that have like yeah nothing to do with physical prowess like oh no trans women have a biological advantage in fishing how does that work uh, like is they upper body more... strength important in fishing? I, I have a I have a joke that is probably going to hit way too close to home for a lot of people. Of course, they're better at fishing than most people, cis or otherwise. They had to wait so fucking long to get their HRT from doctors who drug their uh their toenails on the ground. They could probably handle waiting for the fucking fish. Yeah, people in the chat are saying chess. <laughs> it's like chess isn't a sport. I don't care. They count it as a sport sometimes for some categorization things. Chess is not a sport. I actually, so my my definition of a sport would also exclude golf and fishing. Mm -hmm. Like my definition of a sport and bowling as well. If you can gain weight while you're doing it, it's not a sport. So like fishing, you sit around in the boat drinking beer most of the time. Mm hmm. Golfing, you sit in your, you like you, you take your swing, then you get in your golf cart, take a sip of beer. Golf is only a sport if you're actually walking the entire course. <laughs> I'll, die, I'll die on that hill, and trust me, if you've been using the cart all the time, you might die on the hill too. Yeah, and so uh, Sorbo is lying about the book, saying yet another example of the left doing whatever it takes to score clicks while washing, uh, while bashing Christian conservatives. This guy has no clue what he's talking about. This guy being the guy who says actor Kevin Sorbo issues anti-LGBTQ children's book, which in every single interview he gave about the book, he came out as anti-LGBTQ. So like, yeah, if that's not relevant to the book, why is he bring it up in every interview? Um, he says it's this guy has no clue what he's him. talking about and only furthers the narrative that most journalists are a joke. My book, The Test of Lionhood, is about a lion cub who learns what it means to be courageous and brave while on a dangerous adventure to save her, his sister cub. I guess and books... Matt Walsh's book was just about a walrus. Yeah. He says, I guess books that don't include LGBTQ plus characters are automatically, excuse me, anti-LGBTQ. Like, no, it's not about the inclusion thing. It's about the fact that every time you interview about this thing, you're like, yeah, gay people suck. Trans people don't exist. Yeah. Sometimes, it... <laughs> on the one hand, I want to be like, Kevin Sorbo, you're being very stupid right now. On the other hand, I, I kind of have to accept that this is the stance he has to take. It's stupid that this he, is, that this he is would the ever whole... feel like he has to. This was the plan from the moment they asked him to put his name on the book that they had probably already written. Yep. It was to farm the outrage from the very beginning. Oh, yeah. So uh, apparently a deleted version of this tweet ended with uh, him saying defamation suit? Question mark? Oh, so he can just get money. He can just, he can just he was, get money. He's going to sue them for saying that the book is anti-LGBTQ, even How though much every single to... article about the book is like, yeah, trans people don't exist. How much you want to bet? How much you want to bet that his uh, his lawyer like grabbed him real quick and was like, "Hey, buddy, but you might want to you might want to fix that 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 one that thing you said right there. That's probably not a good one. It's not gonna. We're not gonna be able to defend that one in court. <laughs> yeah." 
So, uh, let's see. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe Sorba just hasn't read his book. That wouldn't be surprising since he probably didn't write any of it. But since he's not about to get rave reviews for the book, he knows the only way he'll get publicity is by overreacting to accurate descriptions of it. Mm. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I want to say K-Sorbs never disappoints, but he he always does. Yeah. So uh, the guy who tweeted about it being an anti-LGBTQ book, he pointed out that, like, after K-Sorbs uh, retweeted him, he got a bunch of uh, his he got a bunch of Sorbo's followers in his feed accusing him of being a groomer and or pedophile. And uh, to thank Sorbo for standing up to the perverts. Um, which like, if the book is anti-LGBTQ, why are all those people doing that for like, they, like that has nothing to do with it. If it's not got anything to do with LGBTQ people. Yeah. Why are you, why like, are all that's... of your responses tailored for LGBTQ yeah. people right and now? Sor Sorbo's not pushing back on any of that because he doesn't have the courage to stand up to his fellow right-wing bigots. Courage mm -hmm. apparently <laughs> is not included in his version of manhood. <laughs> I, Jesus just, Christ. I love Hemant Meta. He's just he's he's got a way of wording things that I just love. Yeah. Like, he is he's the friendly atheist, but he's not very friendly to Kevin Sorbo here. And well deserved on Sorbo's part. I'm not saying he should be friendly to Sorbo. I mean, to be honest, it's it's friendly that he's using passive aggressive language as opposed to loaded language he's he's a Unlike canadian Sorba. he's a canadian at heart <laughs> uh the most the most we can say for the american south is we'll say bless your heart one too many times and <laughs> if we've done that we're actually calling you a slur probably i mean i said that about uh who did i say that about i don't remember i said that earlier in this stream <laughs> i think you said I think you said bless bless your heart to the the Fox News hostess, Janine Pirro. I think so. Sure. Naranda put Hemet is the first to admit he's actually not that friendly. I feel like he's a friendly guy. Like I've seen him talk to people that I know are pieces of shit, and he's perfectly polite and friendly in a way that I'm not sure I would manage to do in that same scenario. And I know mm -hmm. that he knows they're a piece of shit, but he also knows that treating them as though they are a piece of shit is not going to accomplish anything. So, like, when he's writing he's... on his blog, that's one thing, but when he's talking to them face-to-face, -face, that's a different thing. And, it, like, he knows how to work that, and he he's very good at it. Well, because he understands that the backfire effect doesn't get you anywhere. Yeah. Like, if, you're, if your goal is to change somebody's mind, you change it by somewhat being on their side, speaking from their perspective. <laughs> You don't do it by being the antagonizer. Yeah, and I, I do try to do that with my channel to a certain degree, but I also just released a video about how G Jesus is into BDSM play. So, Well, remember, if God truly is all-powerful, then he has the power to take a joke. Yeah. My mother used to say that uh, house cats are proof that God has a sense of humor. Because those things are just stupid as fuck. She didn't say that last part. That was me. <laughs> My cat's not stupid. She just wants to go inside, outside, inside, outside, inside, outside, inside, outside. You know what? Having been a cat person my entire life and now having a dog in the house, it's just so obvious that dogs are more intelligent than cats. Like mm -hmm. pe people will people will defend cats by saying that they like they're too intelligent. They're too intelligent to just do what you tell them to do. But it's like it's not even about doing what you tell them to do. It's about figuring out situations. Like I've seen my dog figure out that this is a situation where this is going to happen and so she will just go along with it. And it's not about compliance, it's about I know it's not worth fighting. Mhm. Mm so it's like yeah, no, uh, cats are not as intelligent as dogs. And the research actually backs this up. And I knew that when I was a cat person. I actually still do kind of like cats because they do take care of themselves. So, like, the amount of times I just, like, forget to take her out and then there's piss on the floor later. It's just like, ugh. The cat never did that. She just peed in the litter box. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
I don't know what Dr. Tasha is talking about, but um, that's relatable. <laughs> it's, it's, what is it again? Uh, oh. So uh, Tasha, it's, it's Squirrel. 